Good afternoon, Team Ramstein. I'm Brigadier General Mark August, Commander of the 86th Airlift Wing, and I'm surrounded by all the experts you actually want to talk to when it comes to COVID-19. We've got mission support, we've got public health, DODIA, DECA, and of course, AVs as well. But we're here to talk about COVID-19. COVID-19, I see, is a threat to our military community. It's invisible, it doesn't respect borders, and it does not discriminate. And the worst part is, is you might be sitting next to or standing next to somebody who's a carrier and not even be aware of it. But we've taken numerous proactive measures to this point here across the KMC in coordination with our partners, our mission partners, to make our community as safe as possible. But we also have to remember that Ramstein is the gateway to the world and that mission is not gonna change. And we've gotta focus on what it means to be part of the world's best wing. When it comes to deploying folks to the Middle East, the mission flow is gonna continue. When it comes to supporting two combatant commanders, both here in Europe and down in Africa, our mission will continue. And under no circumstances can our adversaries think that this is an opportunistic moment to challenge the United States. We stand ready and we stand committed. But I've gotta to talk to the heart as well because this is what our community needs to hear. First and foremost on my mind, is an awareness of what it means to be an airman living overseas and how do we help our families. First up on our list, as everyone is aware of, especially starting today, is DODIA and the CDCs are closed. Foremost on my mind in this issue is we look at the single parents, the mill to mill, the sieve to mill, the folks who have children at home that need a little bit of extra help. When you think about what it takes to do all those things, it is my number one priority. If you go to the Ramstein webpage, you can see the policy letter that's out there. It affects our active duty folks, it affects our family members, it affects our GS civilians, and we're even working on the local national front as well. I'll make it very clear. We expect a parent to be home with their children during this time to make sure that our community is well cared for. And of course, up there with ODIA as well, as we're working today with our partners as we try to figure out things like, how do I take care of internet and bandwidth and computers? That's an ongoing effort that we're gonna to work together to give you the best answers to make sure that your virtual classroom is just as effective as your actual classroom as well. Of course, our mental, or I'm sorry, our medical clinic is also opening its own COVID-19 clinic as well. We need a single point of entry and we need a single point of contact for our families that are out here in the community to have those questions answered. The last thing we want you to do, especially if you've got symptoms, is to show up at an ER. We want you to call first, work with the medical professionals so we can get you the help that you actually need. We're also taking numerous proactive measures to reduce the risk to our population. Events have been canceled. Customer service functions are shifting to appointment only and we're trying to draw down to non-essential functions to the absolute minimum possible as we protect our warfighting capability. I'm also very concerned as well about the implications of the stop movement order signed by the SECDEF. We know we have hundreds of airmen that are scattered around the world, either in TDY or leave status. Fortunately, we've got new guidance out that will help many of our airmen understand that their financial burdens will be addressed. If you go back to the Air Force and you go to my purse, if you go to our website, you'll see the policy letter that's now out there, which highlights many individual circumstances, but we know it's not gonna cover them all. For anyone that is out and can't get back to Germany, this is the time to start talking to your squadron leadership so we can walk you through the correct process. And of course, finally, we'd be silly if we didn't think that PCS season wasn't in front of us. It's right there and this delay is stopping everybody in place, both overseas and here. We have 200 people expected to move in the next 60 days, and all those individuals can expect a personal phone call from our logistics readiness squadron to figure out the best course of action for household goods, vehicles, and everything else. Please also stop by the webpage again to take a look at what those current policies are. But it's important that I hand the microphone off to our experts as well to try to get some initial comments to answer most questions that apply to all. I'll turn it over to Dodia first. Thank you, sir. Uh, Dodia is grateful for an outstanding and robust partnership with our Air Force and Army leadership across the district. We communicate continually and work together to make good decisions for families. As we've worked through this, we've made every key decision in close consultation with command partners and with medical professionals as well. This has been crucial and will continue. 
The decision to close school was a joint decision and reflected our work with command in all respects. We started preparing a couple of weeks ago for this possibility. Teachers, administrators, and other DODEA employees are working nonstop to prepare a continuity of education for students. We first experienced closures in DODEA South District, and we work with that district every single day to make sure that we learn the lessons that they learned as they rolled out digital learning for students. And this is not just sending homework home via email. We're building and preparing to use a digital learning format that is a combination of real-time instruction and interaction between teachers and students, as well as offline student work and instruction. Our goal is that the students will get the best digital learning experience possible and as close to a traditional classroom experience as we can provide. More details will come out from the schools in the district over the next few days, explaining how students will access their teachers and instruction and how this digital learning will take place. And we'll begin our digital instruction this Thursday, March 19th. Thanks, Steve. So my name is Colonel Bobby Thompson. I'm the 86th Mission Support Group Commander. So when it comes to life on Ramstein, the Mission Support Group impacts almost every person that comes in and on and works on this installation. And so um, I look forward to seeing the questions that you have um, regarding that life on Ramstein. This weekend, as we were moving through the steps that closed our fitness centers, affected how folks were showing their ID cards at the gates, there were lots of questions out there, I know. Hopefully some of those questions are getting solved or uh, getting answered for you as we move through this. We appreciate your patience. And, uh, and, and as we work through this, the most important thing that I'd like to, con to convey is that there are a lot of hardworking professionals dedicated to making sure that the lives of all of our folks that live and work in the KMC are, are cared for and thought of and, and responded to and, and in every way that affects the lives of the folks here. So um, with that, I'll pass this over to uh, Lieutenant Colonel Tracy Bozon and Public Health. Hello, my name is Lieutenant Colonel Dr. Tracy Bozon. I am the Public Health Emergency Officer um, for the installation. And what I wanted to make sure that everybody understood from the, the 86 Medical Group is that we're committed to providing safe um, medical care and protecting our patients and staff at all possibilities. You will recognize that we'll probably have a degradation of normal services as we flex to support um, the triaging of the COVID-19 cases and other symptomatic needs and other acute medical needs for the population that we serve. There's a few things that changed in the med group over the last 24 hours, and I wanted to make sure that you understood those, although they're posted on numerous websites. Um, one is the COVID hotline that was alluded to by General August as far as um, to get advice and appropriate triage. Also, we're gonna do a COVID clinic, and that is to try to make sure that we if your risk is considered high enough, either based on your travel or your symptoms, um, that we get you routed to an appropriate clinic um, where you're kind of um, segregated from the, the, the rest of the population to keep everybody as safe as we can. We've also reduced to single point entry, and that's again to keep our, pa our patients and our staff safe. We'll utilize TCONs as much as we can to help limit exposure of well people, um, because as you know, the clinic, sick people come there to be seen, so we're gonna try to limit how many people um, can potentially get exposed. Uh, it's important to remember that right now, prevention is really the key, um, and it's to limit the spread and to, and to do what's called flattening the curve. So we're trying to make sure that those people that get ill, don't get ill so fast that it, it outstrips our capability in the medical field to care for those individuals. So if we can make sure that everybody prevents it, it it'll just slowly ebb and flow, we hope. Um, and so please follow, and the other big thing is please follow the guidelines. If you're quarantined or isolated, please abide by those guidelines because we're trying to, again, prevent the flow. Um, it's important to remember this is primarily a cold or a flu for most people. Um, and please recognize this is a ever-changing um, dynamic as it kind of globally spreads and the recommendations will change as we go, but we're really focused on risk-based evaluation at this point in time. And with that, I will uh, pass it to AFIS for their comments. Thank you. Um, first of all, I want to say that the exchange is committed to the health, safety, and well-being of our shoppers and associates. We're doing everything we can to ensure the safety of our customers. Um, some of the things we've done is um, all of our food operations are now takeout only. 
um, we've removed seed seating from all of our food courts um, to eliminate uh, gathering. We've closed our theaters, canceled all upcoming events, and removed all vendors from our carts in the KMCC mall. Um, we've increased the frequency of cleaning of the exchange. Um, we've also, uh, to give everybody an opportunity to buy some high demand items, we've limited them to three items per customer per item. Um, also, I want to tell you about a program we have called Buy, in, Buy Online, Pick Up in Store. Um, you can uh, go online. Uh, if the item is available in the store, you can buy it uh, online and then go pick it up in the store in customer service. That'll uh, save you the time of waiting in line and you can get in and out and no reason to gather in, the, in our facilities. Um, also, um, I want to address children gathering in the KMCC. Um, I think the intent of the children being out of school is, is to keep them home and, and keep them from gathering. So please don't send them to the exchange and allow them to um, gather in this area. And with that, I'll pass it to Deca. Hello. Deca has two central dis distribution centers in Germany, uh, Germersheim and also Cold Storage in Kaiserslautern. Our in-stock rate at those uh, within those CDCs are 93%, which service 33 stores throughout Europe. So what we would like to let you all know as shoppers here in, uh, in the KMCC area is we have stock availability and uh, we're doing everything we can to continue uh, to provide the best possible uh, service to our patrons. Uh, we have buyers that um, they place orders every, every week. Uh, when they place those orders, we're, we're looking at a pro approximately a 45 day transit uh, over the ocean. We have um, vessels that res we resupply every week. Uh, they are delivered to the ports and in the CDCs, um, as well as um, uh, we continue to order uh, the items that are not in stock <clears throat> for replenishment. Uh, Ramstein and Vogelway commissaries have six dry deliveries per week, um, and they also have five chill and frozen meat, chill, frozen, and meat deliveries every week. So we want you to know that we have product that continues to flow through. The stores have been doing uh, so much increased business that we're um, expediting additional deliveries for our distribution centers uh, to arrive, uh, which arrived yesterday to support the services here. Uh, <clears throat> if stores need additional deliveries, we have, uh, we have the authorization and uh, the partnership with our CDCs to get those deliveries here um, as needed. Friday, for example, Ramstein, um, Ramstein sales was $360,000. Normal sales for a day at Ramstein on a Friday payday was, is $130,000. So as you can see, um, we did an excessive amount of volume. Uh, but again, we're working around the clock and continuing to provide the best service. Uh, I want to, uh, from the Decker perspective, uh, we, we would like to let you all know that there's no need to uh, panic shop. Um, <clears throat> the panic buying is not necessary. We've seen it, uh, and we are, uh, we've continued to uh, brace for it and support you guys, but it's, it's not uh, unnecessary because we're going to continue to fulfill our, our commissaries. Also, um, uh, as a safety precaution, we are pressure washing our sh shopping carts, and we also provide hand wipes uh, in the front of the commissaries. And uh, that's all I have. I'll turn it over to General August. Thank you. Tell you, one of the best parts about hosting a Facebook Live virtual town hall is a chance to get at some questions that are across the community. We can sit and give our perspective here at the table for things that are going on, but it's important to hear some of those those important parts. So thank you for all of you that are that are starting to pipe in and have some questions that are popping up. So the first question that's up, and it looks like it's mine to answer, is will waivers to get back to Germany be approved? And I want to highlight that there's really three forces that are at play right here now. One is you have U.S. policy that's out there. You have the Secretary of Defense and Air Force policy. And then, of course, in the case of Germany, we also have international and certainly host nation policy as well. We focus a lot, and this question is really geared toward what about the DOD policy? The Secretary of Defense's policy is stop movement. And with that in mind, the bar is actually fairly high to get people to move back around. As a matter of fact, the authority has only been delegated to the first general officer or SES in the chain of command. 
And so for those in the 86 air left wing, that means I've got to review every single one of these. For folks that have some of these hardships or some of these humanitarian or mission essential needs, the three criteria that we have to work with, please reach out to your first sergeants and your squadron command teams to understand the process. Your waiver must be improved in writing. So in some cases to get back to Germany might require one of those three categories. As of this moment, we are working the PME waivers to get folks back here. It's depending on what school you're in, there has been some guidance to get folks back, but for everyone else, if you need to get back to Germany, please work with your squadron leadership team and we're working on getting some of those approvals already in place. Next question, can you speak on what's happening with deployments? As of last night, the Air Force Personnel Center has released that those missions, those requirements are still ongoing. UCOM is still looking at about our commitment to the deployments, but right now for everybody else, the deployments are coming from CONUS through to the Middle East, wherever people are going, which means the Gateway to the World mission, our professional airlift mission, will continue here at Ramstein, which is part of the balance that we will consider every single time we look at balancing the community health versus the mission set that we have. So everyone's favorite question, because the chief and I get asked about Operation Varsity all the time. People are already asking what happens to the next Operation Varsity. Um, right now, I think that this is a varsity level event, everything we're doing. I was not expecting pandemic to be one of the things that we would practice uh, in our exercises. Um, but we also have to remember here at Ramstein is that we have mission partners as well. Um, one of the big things that we have going on right now is the Air Mobility Operations Wing has their major graded exercise at the same time. So we have to work at rescoping or changing Operation Varsity with our Air Mobility Command partners. More to follow on that front, but I think the IG is watching everything that we're doing, and right now I'd have to say highly effective for the entire team. Next one up is PT tests being postponed. Uh, because of fitness centers are closed. What's the trigger point to reopen fitness centers? I'm gonna turn that over to the MSG. Thank you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Happy to take this one. So for fitness tests, uh, it was interesting. As soon as we had made the announcement that the fitness centers were closing, the first question we saw come out was, what are we doing about fitness tests? I can tell you that there's a lot of indicators and, and decisions that go along the way but here's what i can tell you we're doing fitness tests by exception right now that means for OPRs or performance reports that are closing out it must be done some deployments are still on these must be done we are testing by exception across the board what we are, author, are asking is for squadron commanders to use their command authority. If folks are getting close to the end of the month and they, it looks like we still haven't opened up the aperture wide enough to do fitness tests, you are empowered commanders to let folks go overdue for a little while. I think we are not where, anywhere near where we're going to be issuing like exemptions or mass delays into the next month. I think for the next couple of weeks, we're gonna use the by exception policy and use the, the fitness centers closed. I'm now using the couch as my support for my, my sit up practice at home and uh, run around the neighborhood to, to prepare for tests. But as of right now, the trigger point to reopen the fitness centers, which was the follow on to that question, will be the leveling off point that Colonel Bozong mentioned. And once we see the, the, the cases numbers and things seem to have leveled off, we're gonna start looking at, at, at how we can reopen. And I can tell you one of the reasons that we made the decision Saturday to close was because of the proximity of folks inside our fitness centers and the number of folks that were in them. I drove around to all of our fitness centers Saturday and of all of the public gathering places, it was by far the most crowded. Because of that and the social distancing we're trying to, to, to it ask folks to do, and gyms are notoriously tough places to keep clean anyways, it only made sense to close those facilities. No one is more up or sad about that than I am. It's an important part of my day, just like everyone else's. But in the interest of keeping everyone safe, that's where we went. So please, if you have follow-on questions, let us know, and we'll continue to work those individual cases as, as we move forward. Thanks, sir. So for those on leave outside of Germany, can you discuss some thoughts how when we will get those people back? Will GS civilians have to use vacation time? This is one of the challenges that we've been facing since the, the guidance dropped last week. Folks that were outside of Germany, 
And so the command guidance is stop movement means stop movement in, in many of the cases. And that was difficult for some folks that were in uh, different locations, maybe they're expensive locations. We know we have some folks who are in Thailand. We have folks that are scattered all over the world. How we'll get them back? Remember, there's two parts to this. There's the DOD stop movement, and then of course there's countries that are closing their borders as well. So when we'll get those back? As soon as we can is, is the key issue. Please work with your squadron leadership though to let them know if you've got unique circumstances. We have been able to approve both a mission essential, get somebody back off of leave, and we've also been able to put together a hardship to get a person back from leave. This is the perfect time to, to get that information to your leadership so they understand your specific case. We're also working through the latest financial guidance as well to relieve some folks' fears of, I'm in an expensive place and I can't do this for two months, nor do I have two months of leave saved up to be able to do this. There's a lot more process to go with it. It's gonna happen soon, we'll be able to give some more guidance. As far as GS civilians having to use their vacation time, Bobby, can you talk a little bit more about that from the CPO side? Yes, sir. So over the last few days, we've been very blessed to get some very good guidance from our headquarters, um, for AFPC and the air staff. And what it does is it gives us very clear guidelines and a lot of flexibility on how we can account for time for all of our folks. Um, for the military side, most of this is pretty easy. Supervisors in uniform can make decisions all the time based on their manning, but it's our civilian workforce where we get most of these questions. And over the course of the weekend, our civilian personnel office and my deputy, Ms. Renee Fisher, have been working very, very hard to get clarification on all these issues. So there will be mechanisms as we move forward to, to account for time and so folks aren't put into undue hardships um, for all, all sorts of those things, the expenses and the leave that would be used up. So I hope that gets to the to, to the question in general, I, I, you know, as I sit here, I can't give the specifics for each individual case, but I, but I guarantee you guidance is flowing to help us give these flexibilities to commanders and supervisors. And if you go by the Air Force webpage on this and you look at COVID-19, you can see there's a whole section on civilians and leave and what's gonna be approved for that as well, which is actually related to the next question. Is there a telework plan for airmen that primarily work in office settings? Absolutely. Your squadron commanders have actually already been given all the guidance and all the tools that they need. For most folks, go look at the policy letter. We're encouraging folks that have the ability to telework to do so. We're only going to man mission critical. We can work shifts. There's numerous, numerous opportunities and tools. More importantly, or perhaps just as importantly, the communication squadron commander is actually already passed to all the leadership teams all the tools that are available as well. Here's the VPN capability. Here's your Outlook web access. Here's all the tools that you will have available to continue your mission and work from home as well. This goes into the priority of protecting our combat resources. We'll let you know when it's time to come in, but please reach out to your command team to make sure that you understand what's gonna be authorized by what your squadron needs to be able to do. The next question though, I'm actually gonna turn this one over for the medical discussion on wearing gloves and masks. Tracy. Thanks, sir. So right now, according to the Center for Disease Control guidance, um, the only people that really need to wear uh, masks are people who are sick. So if you're sick and are coughing, the masks protect you from spreading your droplets, which is how the virus actually spreads. And so those are the people that are important. The, the people that are well and asymptomatic do not need to be wearing masks because there's not evidence that the general mask that you would buy in the grocery store or something like that are gonna protect the respiratory droplets from getting into you. The exception to that rule would be the healthcare providers and we're wearing a very specific type of mask designed to protect us when we're take caring, taking care of patients who are more prone to ha potentially having the condition or other conditions that would put us at risk. Um, so that's the big thing with masks specifically. As far as gloves, um, you can wear gloves, just be mindful. It's just like washing your hands where if you are wearing gloves or um, or if you have you know, dirty hands or something and then touch your face, um, you can potentially transfer viruses and things like that. So the gloves issue is, is kind of here or there. Um, it's not necessarily protective unless you're in a condition where there's known infection. Sure. Oh, we'll turn over to Aegis. Thank you. 
So the question is, will the KMCC exchange remain open and are there plans to close some of the smaller stores located in the BX? So at this time, no. However, this, uh, this is very fluid and changing time. So um, we could be directed to close stores at, at, at any time. But at this time, there are no plans to close. Um, what's going to happen to the employees in the food court? Well, the food court is still open. Um, the only thing we have done is remove the tables and chairs so our customers can't gather in that location. So the concepts are all open. Um, it's just takeout only. And then, uh, I think that's, and then I'll return it over to DECA. So the question is, what is the restock schedule for the commissary? The, our, our replenishment schedule and restocking remains the same it is, as it has always been. When both stores close, um, Ramstein and Vogelway, uh, they close at 2100 um, Monday through Saturday and then 2000 on Sundays. Uh, once those stores close, we have our vendor stockers that come on as well as our deck employees to restock the stores. And um, so that's going to continue in the foreseeable future. Uh, DECA has no plans of uh, closing commissaries or curtailing hours unless uh, installation leadership is directing us to do that. Thank you. And I will turn it over to Dodi. Thank you. Uh, question is, what is the plan if the internet fails or bad internet for students? Uh, we understand that not every family has reliable internet connections as speeds great, uh, greatly vary in different villages. Uh, to this end, we're working to find viable solutions to the most impacted by inadequate internet speeds or, or fails. It's, this part is a work in progress. In terms of special education, will special education students get services such as speech and OT? Uh, yes. Um, Special education students with an IEP or students on 504 plans, we understand that the distance learning can be more difficult for some students with specialized needs. Uh, parents are encouraged to speak with the teachers and their case managers regarding specific concerns. And at this time, we ask for your patience as we work through how to best accommodate these students. But we're in the middle of a phase one plan on how to prepare to deliver these services to students. And by Thursday or Friday, we'll in, be into phase two where we'll actually be delivering uh, services to these students. And I'll turn this over to Colonel Thompson. Okay, thanks, Steve. Okay, so we have a question that says, do we know if student-dependent travel will be available for our dependents back to Germany for summer? So guidance is flowing on that all the time, and I know that a lot of co colleges release their students for the semester at different times. Um, what we're looking at, um, and, and in no way to make light of this, but this situation is really evolving almost all daily and mostly weekly and so as we move forward we know that this is going to be a bigger issue for our folks that their students have nowhere else to go but back home there are accommodations already in work to make sure that every family member is reunited with their family back here in germany and if all indications are moving the way we think we should have perhaps a delay or two just because the sheer volume of folks moving back and forth but everyone should be able to return to their family according to as close to their normal return schedule as expected. That's what we hope. Of course, we'll always be subject to stop movement, uh, the country rules. Um, if, if Germany is still not allowing folks to come in and out, all of this will be contingent on that. But we are absolutely working to make sure that our college students get back home to their parents. Okay, I have another one. If personnel have already turned notice into landlords but are now stuck for 60 days, what's the process? Okay, so... What I am is the Mission Support Group Commander, Kevin, Colonel Kevin Parker and the civil engineers have the responsibility for our housing, uh, um, our housing office and our housing um, accommodations here. But what I can do is take all of these questions and make sure that that, that gets to the right folks and then we'll get this out in the information repository. Um, I, I can tell you that from the soldier and the airman's uh, aspect, there are so many families that are facing this now or will in the very near future. And so we across the enterprise are taking a good hard look at that so the question we have is please define social distancing so social distancing is essentially the practice of trying to distance yourself socially um, 
in reality, it's really how do we keep people from really congregating? Um, most of the time, this virus is spread if you're within six feet of somebody or two meters of somebody for longer than about 15 minutes. That's what close contact is. Um, and so we try to keep people out of that bubble um, as best we can. And so that's really what social distancing is. So if you don't have to go to a, a, you know, a public gathering, then try not to because right now, as you can tell by the, the sheer numbers as they increase in Europe, we want to try to protect people as best we can. Um, so we encourage social distancing. And I'll pass this next one to the commander. Thanks for giving me the hard one. Will there be any reprimands for people who do not follow social distancing protocols? Um, realize with the military mission, whether you're loading aircraft, you're working around offices, you're working in the hospital, there are going to be times that the military mission requires us to be within the social distancing protocols. This is that balance that we're gonna to continue to go after. So, so no reprimands. However, we all are now acutely aware that's the purpose of these town halls, policy letters, working with public health, working with the medical group to understand that this threat is out there, it's real, and we know how it spreads. So no reprimands, but we would ask everyone when possible, and the military mission permits, to please follow the social distancing protocols. And I'll turn it over to you for the test kits. So the question is, does the base have access to test kits? Um, it, at this time, Ramstein Clinic ourselves do not have test kits, but that all the testing goes up to Larmsey. Um, so up the hill at Langstuhl Regional Medical Center, they have the test kits available up there. Um, and then the, the next question was, how many positive cases do we have in our community right now? Um, that is a variable answer as of yesterday's data um, from the Kaiserslautern community and city, there was nine in the local community. Um, if you look at Rhineland Faults as a state itself, there's 168, um, and that was data pulled from yesterday's numbers. And the next test, uh, is the medical community prepared to handle an influx of patients? So as I said in my opening uh, comments, we're really trying to flex um, our operations to make sure that we can take care of as many patients um, as they come through. If people are particularly sick, um, then we will try to, we'll make sure that they have access to the care that they need, be it a hospitalization or not. Um, but I'd remind most people that most individuals that get COVID-19, it's just like a cold or a flu, and most people have relatively mild symptoms. So when we say go home and rest and recover there, we're not making light of the fact that you feel ill. It's only in the matter of fact that we're trying to preserve the bed space in the hospital for those that are particularly ill. The next question is, should people who have returned from a level three country self-quarantine? So this is a challenging question because currently we all live in a level three country, being in Germany. Um, so the question is, is do you quarantine on your way to and from work? That is going to be a challenge. So what we've done in the medical community is to try to really make this risk-based decision protocols because not all level three countries right now are created equal. Um, the number of cases in each um, is widely variable, and so we are trying to pick through the nuances. If you have particular questions about where you've been, um, you can always call our COVID hotline. The number is posted on the, um, the COVID website, um, and you can call, and we can work through your individual case issues. And with that, I will pass it back to Colonel Okay, thank you, Tracy. Okay, so I got a question. Will the Ramstein Aquatic Center close, and what about the library? Okay, so first on the Aquatic Center, the answer is perhaps. Right, so why we didn't close the, the pool with the gyms is sort of an easy one because when I went to the gyms, they were packed. When I went to the pool, there was four swimmers inside. So it becomes that proximity issue and the number of personnel. The pool actually gets far fewer users. If we see that number uptick, then we're gonna have to maybe reassess. And the same goes for the library. It's very important to remember that we decided not to wholesale close all of the activities on base. We took a very stepped approach to this and how we came to the conclusion or the decisions we made uh, that really started Friday afternoon into today. So the library is one of those activities that are very important to the quality of life for the folks at, on, on base. And especially there's a, a with the books and things for kids to do and, the, and just all of the school-aged children, plus the humans that are looking for things to do need books. 
We want to keep that library open. So as we move forward, if we see a potential risk there, we will stop and reevaluate and make a decision based on that. And the same goes for the aquatic center in closing. In fact, all of the facilities that are under the MSG's authority, we are taking a very reasoned, thoughtful, careful approach to this to get after what Colonel Bozong said, which is we weigh the risk and then we make a good, solid decision that will will support the, the greater good of our community. So should those of us due to PCS in May continue to our process as normal? Personally, I would say yes. Most of our out processing now is done virtually or through email or phone calls. I would go as if everything is going to be fine right up to the some of the major decisions you had to make which we are already looking at as far as reservations and, and household good pickup and things. But as you're moving forward, you need to continue to plan because what I don't want is a giant balloon that's going to release and then a, a ton of folks but way behind the power curve because they failed to continue to do the normal out processing steps it takes to to leave an installation like Ramstein and then really get stuck on the end when it's time to go and they can't because they haven't completed their out processing so as much as you can I encourage you to continue to do so okay don't damn Steve thank you sir uh, question, since the schools are closed, are they being sanitized? Uh, yes, they are. They was start, that work was started on Friday as soon as the students left the building. And one of the goals in not having teachers report today was to have the building free of anyone other than our admin teams to thoroughly clean and sanitize the buildings. After today, it'll still be on a regular um, cleaning schedule. Even though students won't be there, we'll continue to keep the schools clean. Uh, back to the command. All right, this might be my new favorite question. When will Army and Air Force guidance align? So a lot of folks that are really watching the town hall are saying, well, I'm seeing different things come out of the garrison. I'm seeing some different policy letters. Why is the Air Force different? And the fundamental answer to this question is actually quite simple. The garrison actually looks at a different area than we do. The four installations that we have here in the 86th Airlift Wing right here in the KMC is different than what the Army does with their garrison hat on. We're not looking at Baumholder or Parmesan's or all the way out to the east end of K-Town. And the letter signed by the 21st TSC commander actually applies all the way out through the Benelux. If you're in Belgium, Luxembourg, Netherlands, and all the way across Europe, so they're going to be a little bit differently because as we're looking at the medical threat, that threat is a little bit more varied than what we're looking at here in the local area. So I'd ask you, if you work here at Ramstein, you work in the 86th, stop by our Facebook page, stop by the WINGS webpage, and go to the USAF Connect app, have Ramstein as your main location, and then be able to see what the latest guidance is, what's affecting us here at Ramstein in the 86th Airlift Wing installations. So along the lines of those installations, this is really important for our resiliency, and what does it mean going forward, especially in the season that we're currently in. Our chapel is going to support religious extracurriculars. Most folks saw this weekend that we, we had to turn off many of these extra activities. The Sunday schools, men of the chapel, um, a lot of these different events have, were actually turned off out of an abundance of caution for the congregation of people in very close proximity. We did decide to keep the religious services ongoing. We've taken all of the Bibles and the hymnals out of the pews. The pews are wiped down and sanitized after every service. The chapel team is committed to your health and safety while maintaining your spiritual fitness in the ways that you choose to celebrate your faith. It's important for the team. Uh, we got probably a half a dozen emails on Saturday alone for what do we want to do? What were the decisions that were going to be made? And I'm really proud of the trap chapel team to take care of airmen and their families to make sure their spiritual health stays strong. So next question, what's happening with the air crews who travel a lot? How are they being protected? <clears throat> if you look at the overall mission set that we have for professional airlift, especially our Air Mobility Command crews, is we're going out of our way to make sure that they're staying in different locations, we're protecting them as much as possible, and we're following Federal Aviation Administration guidance, as well as DOD guidance, to keep them separate and as safe as possible. They are currently exempt from the 14-day quarantines except when they present symptoms, in which case they will go through extra screening and everything else. 
this is a tough time for folks in the mobility business to say we're going to continue to move around the world. Logistics will stay alive. Our air crew are going to keep the mission flying, and we're going to do our best to keep them protected. Turn it over to the MSG. Okay. Thanks, sir. Okay. First one is, will the base be limiting sign-ons at the visitor control center? So right now, no. We, we have the procedures in place to sign folks on to the base, and as of today, there is no intent to limit those numbers of sign-ons. What I will say, though, is the question sort of leads you to the answer itself. If there is a, not a solid reason to be bringing groups of folks onto the base, it's probably not a good idea to do so. Limited activities now that we've closed many of the facilities, it's not like folks are going to be going to, um, to see a movie or to go work out at the gym or something like that. Uh, if it's mission related, I, I'd say work has to press. But a, a good common sense always prevails. Uh, next one. Why is RTT not refunding trips in full? I feel like this question is a bit of a setup. Like, have I stopped kicking my dog? <laughs> I have not heard that RTT is re not refunding trips, so that would be my first answer. The second is, some of the trips, because of the nature of them, deposits with the activities on the other end have already been made. And so until all of those things get sourced back and we understand what the full accounting of all of those trips are, th there's some controls in place to, to manage, manage the books. So what that really means is if, if a voucher isn't offered, I am certain that accommodations will be made as this in the days and weeks ahead to make sure that all the folks who signed up for trips are taken care of in the right way. Um, public health, Tracy. Yeah, thanks, sir. Okay. So the question is, I've seen several children out playing on playgrounds. Is that safe? Can you speak to that on a public health level? Um, this goes back to the social distancing question or statement, which is really we should try to keep um, people apart from each other. And it's hard to keep kids apart from each other um, because they might not be as good or as thorough with washing their hands um, or anything else like that. So while I won't say that you shouldn't, you know, get outside and exercise and play, um, congregating at playgrounds has the same construct of congregating at the KMCC or something like that. Um, so I would just be cognizant. Um, if they're going to go play on the playgrounds, make sure they wash their hands on a regular basis. And with this, I'll pass it to AFIS. Thank you. Uh, the question is, will the banks close in the BX? Well, the banks are, are not part of the exchange portfolio. However, I would uh, say that if we get um, direction from command to close the exchange, the banks will probably close along with us. Thank you, sir. OK, so the, the last question that I have is there are several athletics fields that are currently locked. Can those be unlocked for children and residents to use? And my answer is absolutely. There are a lot of fields on base that are closed for different reasons. A lot of it has to do with the condition of the fields. We've got a lot of rain lately. And so during the normal course of events, fields are closed for repairs, for drainage. Playgrounds are closed for construction as we get ready into summer. Not everything that happens on base that you see is a direct response to COVID-19. A lot of it is just a natural order of things. Uh, for instance, the, the Ramstein Library is going on its normal five-year inventory of all its books. It just so happens to be closed at this time because of that's when it was scheduled. COVID didn't ask if it was going to happen. So as we move forward, if you see these things, my pitch to you, to everybody out here, is to use your supervisors, use your chain of command, and my special plug is to use your key spouse network. This is what we train them for. This is what our spouses and our, and our mission partners are all here to do, is to answer your questions and to help re relay the messages and the concerns from the field into the leaders that can help make the change or get the word out. So please, by, by any means necessary, contact your key spouses. They're there to help you. I am here to help you. Okay, over to you, boss. And so when we look at this opportunity to do a virtual town hall, I'd ask folks to please keep the questions coming. The command chief and I are going to be on AFN Friday morning. We're going to take more of these questions that you have, and we're going to answer them on the air. We will definitely take these into consideration. But when we start thinking about COVID-19, I can honestly say no one expected this to become a pandemic. 
I certainly didn't think this would be a driving force that we would have in 2020. But I will tell you, I am 100% confident in our leadership team. As I look at the time we've already spent together and the challenges that 2020 already brought to the entire team, I can't imagine picking a better team to go through this. You begin to realize very quickly that rank doesn't matter when it's time to come up with the best ideas, the best courses of action, and the things that really affect our families the most. In this wing, we have experts on every single topic. All we have to do is work together to make progress. But I'd ask everyone to stay informed. The policies, the guidance, the decisions are happening at a tremendous pace at the international level, the national level, and the local level. Please stay informed. The best ways to do that, to be involved with our planning, to understand the decisions we're making, is please go and download the USAF Connect app with Ramstein Air Base. Please go by the Ramstein webpage. Look at the COVID-19 tab. You'll see the policies. You'll see the letters. You'll see the questions. You'll see the answers. So many things will be available at the time that they're made or the decisions are made. Please stop by our Facebook app as well. Stop by our page to see what's going on. Those links will direct you back to the webpage for the long form articles that are out there as well. Here at the 86, we'll continue to plan. We will continue to prepare and we'll work across the base to balance the health of our community with the mission that we have. And as always, thank you for your leadership.